Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, episode 90. Here, we talk about everything Commander-related, and this week, we are going to go over the infinite wisdom of the community. Do you bolt the bird and other sage magic the gathering advice? Uh, Some of these are... 60 card format advice, uh, pieces of advice, some of them for 100 cards. We're going to see whether they hold for Commander and whether they hold in 2023 because some of these sayings are quite old. Uh, so before we get into it, let me introduce our crew here today. We have Tomer, Budget Commander. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Richard. I'm very excited to talk about stuff and have hot takes as usual. All right. The Asian Avenger Krim, how are you doing? I'm um, great. I have coffee, so I'm awake. <laughs> oh, that was, that's a next level play. I'm a, a new by Rookie Mystic. I didn't bring any. And Phil, Brewer's Kitchen. How How's it going over in Germany there? Uh, finally, some good weather. So you see sun Light still outside. Out, so getting better. Still wearing hoodies all day, but still. It's getting better over here. And I'm also... Oh, like 14 degrees there? Uh... Uh, today these, was fine. These European I, units, I don't know what 14 degrees is. <laughs> 14 is yeah, what's the uh, time? on the verge of being the okay. Time? Sorry. Explain it in NA. <laughs> <Not being>. <laughs> yeah, explain it in NA. Canada's in NA, but we don't count that. Well, right? What made-up metric are you using this time? Okay, so be sure to like, subscribe, follow us on all the platforms. We are on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. Uh, YouTube music, apparently. Uh, so we are everywhere. So make sure you, you, you seek us out. And uh, if you want to help support the show monetarily, you can check out Richard's Garage, mtggoldfishmerch.com, where we sell MTG Goldfish branded gear. Uh, so with that out of the way, let us get into the most common expression, bolt the bird. What does this refer to? There is a card, Birds of Paradise. It's a one mana creature. It's a zero one. It taps to add mana of any color. And then Lightning Bolt is a one-mana instant where you can deal three damage to any target. So in 1v1, the Sage advice is whenever your opponent plays the Birds of Paradise on turn one, you always bolt it. Um, So if someone plays a bird in Commander, do you bolt it? And I guess the equivalent uh, for us is also Soul Ring. If someone plays a turn one Soul Ring, do do you destroy it? So, do, you waste a, do you waste like a Vandal Blast targeting like a turn one Sol Ring? Are you going to turn one, spend yeah. one mana Vandal Blast? Okay, so let's start with the bird. The bird is only one mana. Yeah. <laughs> it only produces one mana. Do you bolt the bird if your opponent plays a bird? Do you play bolt? Let's say you, okay, Swords the Plow. Okay, do you Swords the Plow shares the bird? <laughs> These are yeah. actually feasible cards that would show yeah. up. Do you Swords the bird? Yeah. I would say. Believe it or not, in Commander, no. no. Yeah. No. Uh, I, I, I don't bolt the bird, I bolt your board. Uh, so, like, that's that's the game plan here. I'll let you go and accelerate into whatever the, the heck you're trying to do. And mm-hmm. because in, in Commander, as I've learned over the time, it, one for one is not great. Mm-hmm. One for one is not great, and that is actively going to hurt your game plan in the long run when it comes to, it, especially with how few removal people run, save it for an actual game-winning threat. Uh, Krim, you play the most. You play the most one v one. Would you say this this advice is correct in in one v one most of the time? One hundred percent. In sixty card, uh, it makes a lot of sense because a there aren't three other people or two other people uh, uh across from you and your opponent. That is, it's just you and your opponent, and the game of advantage of of like resources is huge in sixty card, right? But in a multiplayer format, though this one person is accelerating, much like a soul ring, they'll draw the aggro of the table, right? They'll draw the aggro of the table. That in its own is like getting your bird bolted because then everybody's got their eyes on your stuff. So in 60 card, makes more sense because you're the only one uh, that's going to deal with anything there. Whereas there's two other players that will probably interact with this person that's popping off. So I thought about this. I thought about this uh, just as a saying. It doesn't really make sense in Commander because you won't spend your one for one removal on a one drop mana producer. But I've been playtesting my own decks against myself, and that is one we one Commander. To be fair, but maybe the saying should be path or plow the Commander. Is that something? Because plow the whenever I 
one we one uh, one for one my, if we remove my commander i'm in a huge disadvantage and it doesn't even feel like a one for one anymore that's why i might be on getting to the side of hey if you're you build like if you play against me if you one for one my commander that is devastating for my game plan and that is kind of more like the bold the bird in one v one so i thought like maybe you should rephrase this for commander and then it becomes maybe true again at least for my decks like if you blow up manius kaga i have to cast it for seven mana and then i'm so far off drawing cards with it so maybe that's it it's another it's not in the spirit of both the bird but maybe both the commander or something could be something that I, is helpful no, no I one is bolting the bird here right so we, yeah. we've concluded yeah, obviously not yeah because it's a one for one like Krim said your two other opponents go up you and your opponent go down and it's only a bird like your yeah. opponent is slightly accelerated and then they become arch enemy so it's simply not worth Phil just invented plow your commander. Do we plow <laughs> the commander? <laughs> I I would I, I actually I think, we think that's a good insight. Also, redo like, that. Uh, that thing. No, we're, we're keeping that. We're keeping that. Oh no no! I, I don't see anything the, wrong with this. I, I, the idea behind it. Yeah, yeah, you could swords yeah. it, but you could also plow it. Whatever this you feel like. This one doesn't like. make any sense. Like this one is like what you gonna run only plows in your hand so that you can plow everyone's commander? Like no, this, I, I, this I one's think context there's... dependent, right? Yes. Oh, I, yes. But I, I think this is more. Oh, yes. This is something I agree with a lot more in most games. Like, like Phil said, there's there's some commanders that if you allow them to untap, they're going to snowball such a large advantage that even, either they outright win the game, or they're going to be so ahead that even if you deal with their board, then they've drawn so many cards or they've ramped out so far that you're going you're going to need more than just one answer now to properly deal with them. Uh Marnius Kalgar is definitely one of those one of those uh commanders where while I don't want to go uh I don't want to spend one card for somebody's commander because then I'm down card advantage wise to the rest of the table. Sometimes I think there are situations where not doing so puts you in a far worse situation. Um, and I do think there, yeah, like if it's like a Miram, for example, or a Joda or a Marnius Kalgar, like some of these, like not all commanders you need to kill like immediately. Some of them are just fine to stick around for a bit. Like, like even like a Wilhelm, for example, like Wilhelm, unless you have a combo piece on the battlefield, I'm going to let it, let it be on the, on the battlefield and stuff. Uh, but like, yeah, if you have a Marnius Kalgar on the battlefield, I feel very obligated, or Joda on the battlefield, I feel very obligated to get rid of it like ASAP or else I don't, I don't see myself uh, my, my odds of winning the game can drop dramatically. So. I disagree. I know. <laughs> I know. I, 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 will never, I, know. <laughs> I, I will never. I, I will always take the 3v1 arch enemy, right? So, okay. okay. So, like, let's say there's an actual thing that if they untap, you're all going to die. Yeah. Right? So, you could use your removal. Um, yeah. And th- this could be applied to anything, really, right? But... If you don't use a removal, right, and everyone is actually afraid, then you're automatically in a 3v1 arch enemy. And I will always take my my friends in the, with the two other, you know, people and go 3v1. And, you know, you never know, right? Someone else might pop off the Rich removal, then nothing happened. Anime. Or you just sit there and then start <laughs> smashing them and, and try to finish the thing. And if you don't do it, maybe you lose. Sometimes the arch enemy wins, yeah. right? But if you, if you have to plow the commander there's three players right they will each play their commander like how many plows are you gonna run and they can recast it like it's not sustainable right so i would rather just enter the game of arch enemy with two partners uh have a 3v1 and if we still can't take them on then th- th- that's it right i don't know good game sir right you could <laughs> you, you couldn't do it right but by 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 plowing the commander you kind of set yourself back and guarantee yourself to fail and there's three commanders to plow. Like, how can you plow them all? Like, it's not possible, right? So, yeah, like, but like, if there's Tronith Magistrate. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think I think it's more more I appropriate think... is to run board wipes. Like, I think yeah, this, I run I, I value board wipes more than spot removal because it gets around the card disadvantage thing. But I still will run some amount of spot removal just because not all commanders are built the same. Some of them. Just Precisely some of them can be on the battlefield, that. and that's fine. Where, like, I mean, they're always going to be good, right? They're all that's the point of commanders. But some of them are better than others, as we've we've learned the hard way. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like setting a person back critically multiple turns uh, for my one card, 
Like, yeah, okay, I, I went down a card, but I, 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 draw more cards. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's legitimately the, the main thing, though, right? Like, like there are commanders that I just don't care about, right? Like, there are mm-hmm. some commanders where what they're doing doesn't actually hurt my game plan. So I can let that stay. So it's not like it's really I've got to worry about killing three other commanders. I really only need to worry about, A, the person who wronged me last, or the commander I don't like. Uh, like, the one that that's the one that is like actively against my game plan, right? Like, if, mm-hmm. if I am playing a graveyard deck, and I, and, and your commander is Kalidus, I probably want my creatures to die, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, or, or not get exiled. So, really, it isn't a remove all three commanders that are against you. It's just the one that, or the deck that has the most problematic stuff against your game plan. So, okay, so I so think plow the commander that will hurt your game plan. Yeah. Right? Well, that's what it means. The it's just very context like, dependent. So it's like really just play good magic at this point, right? It's, but, it's, yeah. I mean, but because bolt the bird is like no matter what's going on, bolt the bird. It's like very straightforward advice. This yeah. one is like plow the commander asterisk asterisk, and there's like eight bullet points that <laughs> well, you need to. <laughs> to I feel like out, that's right? going to be like a common a common thread <laughs> about about most of these absolutist takes uh, <laughs> sayings. I mean, okay. I mean, if, I hope if, for there, if, there, if there is Which always a, if, if there's always a plow the commander, it's Joda, right? Joda's one of those, <laughs> the five color one. That one. Just Basically, can't anything stay. Phil plays, he just yeah, anything Phil plays, play play like, he's like, like, it immediately. Wow. Attack. He's just got uh, he got rid of it. Pretty, Speaking pretty of Phil, yeah. there. do 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 you Vandal blast the Soul Ring? I do not. So so no. Soul Ring is no, two no, mana now. We're up. We're up from the birds. Uh, you have less answers, or maybe more answers. Like, do you play Nature's Claim just to snipe people's soul ring? Like, if, if we think blowing up the soul ring is great, do you run like Nature's Claim or something to to get no, rid of it? I don't Realistic think Vandal really really Blast is probably what you have in your deck that could actually do this. I have because or, yeah, I haven't I haven't Vandal Blasted, but I have basically started including Thieving Skydiver in basically all my blue decks as a way to uh, cheekily deal with the soul ring problem. Uh, Thieving Skydiver, it's a two-mana uh, merfolk rogue, I think, that flies. It has kicker, and you can pay, like, X, a minimum one. And uh, if you do, you steal an artifact, uh, mana value equal to or less than X. So if you pay three mana, X equals one with Thieving Skydiver, you just steal somebody's Sol Ring. So I feel like those are usually better because you're not, like, going one for one. You're kind of, like two for oneing because not only have you you're, you're taken away the sol ring but you now have a sol ring and sol rings yeah. are very good <laughs> so. no that that's the correct way to look at it like if i'm gonna one for one something it has to be game ending um so what you're going to sol ring into probably something i'm gonna one for one until then your sol ring is like your setup and i'd rather just steal that for myself put myself up a card uh while you deal with all the aggro for putting that out there yeah with sol ring i'd say you can rely on, hey, now we're getting out on this person. Still, I, I mean, I'm <laughs> fine if nobody blows up my college. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I know how it feels to be on the one side of this. But, uh, I mean, I still wouldn't blow it. Like, I wouldn't blow up a song ring. I, I asked you not to blow up my Manuel's Kaga. It doesn't interfere with your game plan. So no, all right. <laughs> All right. It interferes by your game plan by making me lose the game, Phil. <laughs> yeah, and wait for my turns to end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this this one this one is commander specific advice, and uh, I don't know that we've ever come to a conclusion on this. And Seth is not here for this one, but always pay the one for Ristic Study. So Ristic Study is three man enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. So, do you always pay the one? Yes. Why, Not why would you? So, why so would in a perfect reward? world, everyone pays the one, and then the person that played this Ristic study is super sad. But then if you know right. everyone is paying the one, you can cheat and not pay the one, right? And then get yourself an extra mana and advantage in everyone because everyone taxed themselves and you dodged the tax. But no if you do that and taxes. then someone else knows you're about to do that, then instead of paying the one, they also don't pay the one. And then no one pays the one. And then this person plays like three mana draw like 20 cards. That is the game theory aspect of this card. Okay. And you know what is you, our you, actual advice? What, what should we actually be doing here? You always pay the one 
because a you don't want to reward the person for playing the card right so you want to make it so they spent their turn they took their turn off and did but, but my game plan is very important Krim. i need to yeah. stay on curve that's <laughs> my- great you have a curve but you know what that gra- what's great about that you can move that curve you know <laughs> just a turn behind like honestly i if it means because it, it depends when the the one is needed to be paid if we're talking early in the game when i haven't even set up yet Dude, yeah, I'm paying the one because I can't let this person run away with it. Late game, maybe if I'm already set up and I've got my pieces on board and everything, like whatever, I don't care if you draw the cards, right? Because like, at that point, so, I've got so everything. Does your, does I need your opinion to fight change your if you know game. what's going to happen? So if it's Toma's Ristic Study and you know that myself and Phil are not paying the one, are you still paying the one? At that point, uh, because everyone except for me has, like, Toma's already benefited. Y'all are progressing the board. At that point, no, I would not. It has to be a table decision, right? Like, because if somebody is legitimately already super far ahead, then the only per- like, if you're the only one paying the one, then you're the only one hurting yourself. And because the other two are just willing to let the person with the, the, the tax effect run w- away with the game. So if you really hate that card, prove it by paying the one. If you're gonna groan about a rhystic study, a smothering tithe, pay for it. That way, you can't pay for that smothering person... tithe. All right, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, maybe, that's only two. Fair, fair, fair. What are you talking who, who about? Okay, for smothering okay, tithe. Fair, fair. <laughs> smothering tithe, tithe, and like, okay, Mystic Remora, you, like you're never paying for that. So, <laughs> yeah. so like, legitimately, like when it comes to like rhystic buddy, uh, you know, Esper Sentinel, rhystic study, any of those, pay the one because it is just so much better to not let that player pull that far ahead especially if it's on curve. Like, turn one, Rhystic Buddy, you saw us do it with Phil. We did not give him the value until way later when we finally established stuff. Or Rhystic Study, always pay if it's on turn three, just because you cannot deal with that card advantage. Mm. See, see, I hear what you're saying, but then in practice, I, I vividly remember how it would be like, <laughs> we would be bickering at the table about what cards are worth not paying the one. It'd be like, I, and then somebody would cast a spell and be like, I'm not going to pay the one because this is worth it. And then the other, that Seth, same person Seth. would turn Just around and be Just like, <laughs> no, I remember a, it was a certain someone else, Krim. I'm not going to say names, but it was like somebody wanted to cast like a far seek or something and didn't pay the one and got chastised. And then the, that same person was like, oh, I'm casting this because it's a higher impact spell and it's worth not paying the one. And then it's like a bickering and just fighting and the game slows down. I hate. Yeah, I was no, having no. a good day, Richard, until until this had to be brought up. <laughs> so, so, so should the advice I, be never pay the one? Because it's no, always pay no. the one. The someone does don't it don't play and the card. table bickers it's, and you all like, get angry at each decision. other. But the advice is, is never pay decision. the one. There's no conflicts <laughs> Here, here's how here's how i deal with this honestly this is all i'll say on the topic because i'm so tired but the the way i i deal with it somebody casts rhystic study and then i say to the table i will always pay the one if everybody else pays the one the moment somebody doesn't pay the one i'm no longer paying the one that's it and then that's it i'm not bickering about it i'm not saying anything else about the card you can choose to pay the one and I will keep my end of the bargain. And if you don't pay the one, I'm not going to pay the one either. And we'll just give the game to the risk study player. It's fine, but I'm not going to, I'm no more bickering about it. No more talking about it. I'm just done. That's it. That's, that's all I say when, when a risk study appears. Much like, like Tomer, if, if the person that doesn't pay the one, like it, once they don't pay the one, they are now null in complaining when the player has it right like you know what i mean and i don't care the reasoning behind it i I don't care it's like i can't fall behind or whatever cards yeah (laughs) Yeah. i'm just not gonna pay the one that's it like once it is a group contract it is a group contract yeah you either a pay for it or you don't and once you agree you don't that's it no complaining there if they have it you know we we had a chance yeah, we I've seen chance. I've seen some tables where they all agree not to pay the one and it's glorious, but like n- like most almost every time it's like the prisoner's dilemma. Somebody's like, oh, I, I, I if if I don't pay, then I get ahead, and then then it all just falls apart. So it's like ninety nine percent of the time people just don't pay the one, and then there's like that one breath of fresh air where people actually do pay the one, and like people are gonna say, and CDH people are responsible. Every single C- every single CDH game I've ever played. And this is with people who have like these no, are content no, creators. This is like CDH. recorded matches. 
they never pay the one. They're just no, like, I can't get behind, them. and that's it. So it's like, don't don't even don't even comment section say, oh, CDH players are you're always no no no. They don't. No, they never they, do. They, they, they run I've the calculations. I've like, never been. Don't worry, this is worth. Yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about <laughs> that's it. They're, 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 they're always like, it's worth, worth it. But then it the turns blue player out, has fierce guardianship. Every single fast mana sp- uh, card yeah. available to them in their deck, and they have force of will, fierce, basically any any sort of uh, free counter magic deflecting swat. No, no, no. Give give them all all the cards. I'm sure you could you could be, team up and beat them. It's fine. But we've no. no I'm, I'm really sure Farsi, <laughs> Farsi anyway. wins the game against well, all of that though. Tell well, me. I have to say about Rissa. So. I'm, playing, I'm angry now. Thanks. <laughs> I'm playing with a playgroup that is relatively new. Like all of them started, or most of them started back in the day with me as a child, and now we play Commander together. And the moment the first time a Rhystic study hit the table, so two of those players never played against it, and I said, "Hey, this card either says whenever an opponent casts a spell, you draw a card, or spells your opponent cast one more to cast." And this kind of convinced the table to say, well, I guess we pay because the draw card is way, way stronger. And I think they drew two cards from the studies over the rest of the game. And it might have just been a because our curves, curves lined up with paying. But I, if you phrase it that way, like whenever the, an opponent casts a spell, your draw card is just unbeatable. And the, I don't know, Thornite, what, what's the... the Taxing every spell for one mana sucks and is not fun. And heuristic study is not fun. Newsflash. But it's better than drawing cards. So if you really, really can't... Please pay the one. <laughs> that situation, like, if you're mana screwed and you have a just a mana oh, rock in no hand situ- and that's all See, this is have. the problem, Phil. The, there's always a situation. The minute you bust out, there's a situation. Because because the I have an excuse for everything. Every reason. It is I, all I, need, I need this far seek. You yeah, guys have too much this. mana, right? Like, I need I need to not pay the one because I'm casting a card draw spell. And what if I need the mana to cast the other spells that I draw into? Cal- okay, calm is, down, is, is it acceptable to generous gift and not pay the one to kill the Rhystic Study? Yes. Would you say that's an acceptable like but sets us at the table. Is it you're, acceptable you're... to sign in blood, not pay the one digging for no, no. <laughs> generous no, gift? No, that is no. We're, we're we're doing like 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 hail marys. No. <laughs> also, I don't think it's unbeatable. I think it's more unbeatable at CDH tables. But like, sure. if you are t- there, the two ways that you win at like a, I would say in any commander deck is like you have unlimited mana and unlimited card draw. You just win the game. Uh, because you'll just have enough resources to answer anything your opponents throw at you. Um, and you'll have the mana to cast it. Um, but at casual tables, if you don't have fast mana, you don't have free spells and stuff like that. Like if you have like 20 cards in hand and you can still only cast like two of them per turn. Yeah. It's much better than having five cards in hand, you know, have the more optimal options, but it is more beatable. So. It is not unbeatable, but like still, like it's just like a bad habit. But, you, know, but you can definitely cool. sculpt a pretty yeah. good. If I've drawn like a million cards, I don't need to keep them all. I know Tomer yeah. likes it. Ooh, reliquary tower. I'm gonna keep them I all. Like my I don't need to keep them all. Yeah. I need card selection, not yeah. not card quantity. So the quality of the card is what I care about. And if they're drawing fifty cards a turn, they're sculpting a pretty good hand, even <laughs> at casual levels. Like at casual yeah. levels, at all levels of play. Letting anybody draw a billion cards, they're going to sculpt a really good hand. Yeah. So don't be surprised that you're like, oh, they're running away with the game or something. How like do they keep having out. the right answer to every single yeah. situation? How do they always <laughs> have it? It's because we keep feeding him cards. <laughs> That's why right. it's a group contract. Here, here's here's one for the legacy players. End of turn brainstorm. Oh, I thought you were going to say initiative. <laughs> or rather not. <laughs> so, so brainstorm. Uh, one mana, draw three cards, put two back on top. And uh, knowing how to brainstorm is a very important. And uh, who knows how to brainstorm here? Should you be casting it end of turn or not? I, I mean, wait. Do legacy? you mean literal brainstorm? Because I mean, I played Legacy, yes. And I played a historic a little bit myself. Literal brainstorm. You know? Yeah, yeah, historic. You got a brainstorm. And man, did it feel good. I, I, like, it was great. There's like very few times where you want to upkeep brainstorm, just like to set up a delver flip. Like if it's like I don't think I don't I, I don't think flipping a delver is like I mean like there's better ways to do it than using your brainstorm. Your brainstorm you, ah. 
Depends on your you're, hand. Mm, I don't know. I mean, if you're like really desperate, sure. But yeah. like, a if you get brainstorm locked because you don't have a fetch, that feels bad. Yeah. Uh, I also love like you know like in the moments where a I get thought seized and being able to brainstorm, tuck it away. Like it can be, brainstorm is a way to just like protect your hand to dig. It does it all, yeah. so it really is flexible in when you want to use it. Uh, but like, so when are like, you supposed to use it, Crib? Well, realistically, when you need to, not okay. I yeah. So okay, so main when, phase yeah. or end of turn? So end for, end of turn spring. probably if we're going off of this because you get most information possible on no, your turn. No, no. I'm sorry. Why, why do why do I need to do it on my turn, Richard? Why would you're I not ever? Supposed, need you're not to supposed to end of turn brainstorm. That's the thing. Right? Okay, because you're putting two cards back on top. So right. if you if you end of turn brainstorm without With a, a fetch, fetch or no fetch. Oh, okay. Huh. Well, I always assume there's a fetch. Okay, okay. So so this is without a fetch land in play. So if you end of turn brainstorm, then you draw back one of the cards you put back on top. Uh, so that's not good. Uh, so if you have a fetch up, that's less relevant. But if you don't have a fetch, when you brainstorm, you could draw into the fetch, play the fetch, and then shuffle. Which is Objection. why you're supposed to do it main phase. Um, Objection. Why is this relevant to a commander podcast, Richard? Because... People don't know how to brainstorm. I don't know. <laughs> should, should, this is should you should not be end of turning. So the the general the general advice is you should play your spells as late as possible. Right. Yeah. Which if you have an instant, that means end of turn, play the instant. However, when it comes to brainstorm, it's not true. Right? So you need to sequence these cards correctly and you need to know how these cards work because sometimes they don't follow the general rule. Um, and brainstorm is is one of those. And brainstorm is like one of those cards you could write a book on. Um, but the the general thing is the fetch, right? And you want to play the fetch, and then shuffle away the cards. So that way, it's mm-hmm. literally just like you know, draw three cards, throw away the bad ones, right? Yeah, what you could do in, on in commander. Style. Yeah, like I would say, like specifically, if you have a fetch and like, play, we, you need a fetch yeah. and play. If you don't yeah. have a fetch and play, you can't play the fetch you drew, right? And You're you not playing redraw. fetches with Brainstorm. What are you doing, though? Yeah. I mean, in Commander, though, like, okay, we're, we're going to just stick it straight to Commander because there's the mm. numerous ways we could talk about it outside of Commander, right? But in Commander, there is a surplus of way of uh, shuffling your deck. So, actually, in Commander, I would believe that it's probably correct to all... Oh, I guess, you know, if you're playing blue, why would you not have a fetch? But at the same time, I don't know. In Commander, I think... budget budget okay so you, assuming that but evolving wilds right like you can still play evolving I don't play wilds, evolving wilds. No. It, the, the general gist is i am <laughs> not going uh, what i'm getting at is i would not play brainstorm if i do not have a shuffle effect yeah. and if i don't need anything right then and there. or it like uh, i'm not just firing a tutor off to tutor i wouldn't play brainstorm unless my commander like really likes the yeah, it's not that good of a card of your commander. library yeah, unless you have something kind of explicit yeah. So there, the there other are problem some, is there holding are some fetches. You you can hold fetches in one v one. So you can play your land and not crack the fetches, and you pass, and then you know you you counter their play or whatever. And if you need to, you can crack the fetch. Otherwise, you save it for brainstorm. Yeah, that's not plausible in commander. Like you don't yeah. leave excess mana every turn in commander because yeah, you do. <laughs> you're not countering everyone's play. There's three other different players, so usually you're like tapping out or you're, yeah. you're planning. You have to use your mana, right? You can't just leave your mana up because yeah. in one v one, if you leave yes, your mana you up, and your opponent leaves your mana up, you're neutral, so you're okay with that. Whereas if three other players do something, and you leave your mana up, you're like falling further and further behind. Um, so I would say there's actually very few reasons to actually end a turn brainstorm in Commander. Um, the best one would be something like you're digging for farewell on turn five yeah. or something and on turn six you need that six mana to cast a farewell <laughs> <laughs> right but you know like mana efficiency reasons but you Richard, use it you use it when you need that commander. effect is that's the real answer is you yeah. don't you don't just pop it off when willy nilly yeah willy nilly and there's not a lot of com- i think you need a top deck commander to worry about like oh, runo stromkirk is a good one the 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 Demir Kraken Leviathan guy where it's like the top card of your library you reveal it and you transform him and stuff that one's good for brainstorm but or Same having miracle draw, cards draw focused commanders I yeah mean, it or draw focused because it still draws two so if you have like the fairies angels insights something that doubles or draw then you draw four and you put away one that's like really good mid uh, while although although picture. in that situation the way that we've just described it like Richard described it I think it's better to literally just not play brainstorm and to play a tutor 
because you are <laughs> in, in Legacy, you are trying to That's play true. in a 60 card deck, you are able to actually look for a singleton card, right? Brainstorm's like in Commander, 20 cents, though. I mean, yeah, I, I guess. I would brainstorm and then shuffle with a tutor, huh? That is the oh, best no. of both worlds. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, why not run both? Tutors. It's a 100 card just singleton. You can't make, you can't make room for a brainstorm. <laughs> Dude, now I'm putting brainstorm on all my decks, actually. That's a good card. So, so, so the, other, the other similar thing, so this is sequencing, right? And this general, So the general rule is play things as late as possible, except yeah. it's not always true. Uh, wasn't there a clash where there was like take an extra combat if you play this during your first combat oh, yeah. and then someone like attacked and then played it during their second combat and they did nothing because I think it was like <laughs> I think it was me and saves the day yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 seize the day no yeah so there you usually play things as late as possible but some cards don't allow you to do that so you actually need to read your cards and think about it for a bit before you automatically jump to these shortcuts uh, because so the other like advice is happen. reading the card explains the card. <laughs> yep, just get this in there. <laughs> I, I actually disagree with this completely. You don't have time. Reading to read. the card explains the card. You don't have time to read cards in 2023. There's like a flip morph. Each side is a planeswalker or something. There's like eighty thousand words on the text. You're like, tell me what the card just does. Wait like, till battles quick. get here, right? Wait, wait. Like a Tell strict me. Dean. Is that, are you going to pass the so like, you pass it to the first player to read, they spend five minutes reading it, you pass it to the second player to read. They read no, you give, them the new, you give them the new Praetors that have like a full mound of text on the yep. front and then they become sagas on yep. the back and you're like, what are the sagas going to do? I don't know. Let me pull it out of your sleeve to read it. Like, yep. no. Oh. Somebody somebody did so like legitimately text. cast a Dean and I just instead of having to listen to them explain the card, I ha. just countered it. <laughs> <laughs> no, if if like, they say if they say great. what their their card is, I just say I believe you and we continue yep. the game. <laughs> it's fine. There is such a thing as TLDR in, in Magic, yeah. and it is yeah. just counter it. You don't have to, Do I need okay. to remove it or not? Does it say uncountable? There are also cards cool. that you, you read it. and you don't understand. They're like, venture into a dungeon. You're like, what does this mean? <laughs> right? You got to like read three dungeons or something while you're at it, right? There's like some mechanic that's not fully like spliced onto Arcane. Like Some of the new Simple. cards don't have reminder text, so you may not Yeah, but you don't need the reminder text. Is. Just counterspell it. The same, the legitimately. What, what that, I'm that not even joking. Can't be countered. That that that's what's funny. No, then, okay. Means. Then well then you, like, <laughs> I, I have countered the Celestis so that I don't have to deal with day and night. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> any right. any tips for navigating commanders and cards you don't understand? Twenty two three. There's also cards where you can read the words, but you don't understand how the rules like actually work like can i cast this from exile or something or what's the mana value when i cast it or can i cast this at instant speed or do i have to maintain the speed of the card like what how do you navigate as a player in 2023 i think just just ask and be like hey what does what does the card do or like you could i sometimes ask like hey is this like a scary threat (laughs) like (laughs) straight up like i'm not reading this i'm happy for you but i'm not reading this like it's commanders for fun like we're there's nothing on the line here we're not it's not a tournament or anything so like i don't know i'll always tell people like if i'm running new cards or whatever i'll be like this is this is a combo piece in my win condition and stuff like you know you should take this out like i I don't want to win because like I, i snuck one over on you you know yeah this would feel bad as well like if you say like oh don't worry about this card or say oh i explain it when it happens uh then it feels pretty bad to use the card so maybe if it's a wordy card give them a td and tldr when you cast it and highlight if you if you're going to combo with it at least highlight the ability that you use yeah. for the combo and, yeah, and if somebody misreads be... the card like they try to like i don't know they try to like destroy your Atraxa, but it flipped into a saga or something. Then you just a lot of tech backsies. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, takes you backsies. Yeah. There you go. Like Shit, they're, they're, com- com- <laughs> magic's really, really complicated. Pro, you know, and we're all playing for my fun. Living room. Uh, sorry, yeah. dude. No takes you backsies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> judge, like, call it judge at home. Get, get good. Sorry, you didn't memorize all twelve hundred new cards that came out in quarter, the second quarter of this week. Of this week, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, reading the card does explain the card, but legitimately, all of that is solved. Like that is more of a thing. Like oh, in like a sixty card competitive format. Yeah. When I'm talking about commander. 
I don't think this matters in Commander because even have if to read I read 50 the card, it doesn't explain the card. You have to like read a novella every players. single time you come up against a new opponent. Yeah. That it's just like, yeah, if you memorize the entire novella, just let somebody fine. take it back. No, no, no one cares, right? It's like, like, like what, what are the stakes here? Like, right? Yeah. Like, oh no, you're, the game is gonna go another two seconds if I let you take it back in what is already like a, a one hour game plus. I don't know. Yeah, it, my so my advice would be be chill. Just, like, explain what your cards do and allow people to, if they make mistakes, to take stuff back. Yeah. And, and, and don't say that. read the card to people. No. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, funny when you say it out loud, but, like, if someone's like, what does this card do? You're like, read the card. You're like, wow. Yeah. I mean, don't try to be, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> villain to be like, aha, you didn't read the card. <laughs> I have activated my trap card. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's funny, it, but don't do that. It's kind don't of weird mean. how Richard said it, like, for example... Venture into the dungeon doesn't explain anything, and then if you want to explain <laughs> it, so there's three dungeons. dungeons and the undercity, <laughs> and you cannot go into the undercity if you venture into the dungeon unless you're already in there. <laughs> so, Progressive. I guess it the saying isn't even true anymore to an extent. Uh, also, don't say to your friends, "Hey, just read the cards." So just. Just, just read the card. It's it like the Phyrexian language, children. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's a bit easier for me to read the card because I have I don't know if this is a normal <laughs> phenomenon. Be like a lot of people explain their cards really bad, <laughs> so yeah. sometimes like all right, I have no idea what you were saying. Like it, like somebody's trying to explain a board game for the very first time, but they're really really yeah. bad at it. So you're just like no, just give me the rules, just just pass it over. Let me let me look at them. I mean, magic has just become where it's like it, it's like the math teacher that is very bad at teaching you math, but knows the math. <laughs> So it's just like, yes, we're glad you understand the math. <laughs> Explain to us how we do that. <laughs> All right. Play to your outs. Play to win. Ooh. They're kind of similar. Ah, this one, they? I feel, commander players definitely do not do. Um, play to so your outs or play to win? I think they're, those they're aren't pretty similar. actually as... No? You, you think they're different? What's the difference between the two? So play to your outs isn't like exactly playing to win. It's playing to keep yourself alive and just knowing what outs you have out of certain things. Like I think of play to win as literally I am going to actually end the game right here. I'm not playing around anything. I'm playing to get as sweaty as possible. Uh, interesting. Like not okay. explaining your cards yeah, and like, stuff. I'm not, I, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah oh, no, sorry. No, yeah, so, so, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I would say we want to discuss play to your outs. Right. So essentially you envision – how you're going to win, like how the yeah. game is going to end with you being victor, and then you play to get to that state. Not like you're going to rules lawyers your friends or whatever and try to like squeak out Angle some shoot. victories, right? Yeah. <laughs> Angle shoot. And uh, so anytime I see things like, um, here, here's a good one, like source the plowshares. People are like, oh, you need to source the plowshares to not lose. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, but does that help you win? Right. And yes. people are like, well, if you lose, how do you win? But I'm like, but if you also set yourself back cards for no reason, how do you win as well? Like, what is what is the you know, you, you need to think about that. Right. You need to have a plan. If you have a plan to win that involves removing uh, with the swords, then that's great. But mm -hmm. you should be ultimately thinking about uh, how you get there. So another good example is like bolt the bird. If you bolt the bird, sure, you set this person back into the Stone Ages. But did that help you win the game? Like, is that yes. the path to win the game, right? And you need to you think about it, right? Because if that person yeah. is like, yeah, sometimes. you know, they, they play a protection from black deck and, you're a, and you are a black deck, right? Then that is probably the right line of play, right? Because you can never beat this person otherwise. But if they're just a random person, no, right? You're setting yourself back by bolting their bird, right? So this mindset of like figuring out how to get there and then doing it, uh, I think I is think like very important. I think it's also like uh, the mindset of playing to your outs. Uh, one uh, one other example, because there's a lot of discussion about it, is like just conceding when you don't when you're not enjoying the game and stuff. And I think that's really valid because it's like it's a casual game. But like, let's say I don't know somebody Armageddon's. Uh, I will see sometimes people just don't like Armageddon, so they'll just snap concede. But I think the play to your outs mindset is like double check to see like your board sit. Um, okay, you lost all your lanes. Do you still have ways to win? Is the person who casts it like have an uh, overwhelming, un unbeatable advantage? And I think that's kind of like the play to your outs mentality, where like you don't just snap concede 
when things aren't going your way you're like all right well i'm in a very bad position i'm in an under under i'm in a uh, underdog spot what are the best actions that i can take to maximize my win my chances of still winning in this game yeah i mean i have a good oh, i have yeah, a they, good example of oh well, okay, I, was gonna, I, I, I just i was just gonna use my example <laughs> of, of commander clash uh-huh now, uh phil's frozen no wait no phil's not no, frozen I'm not. now he's not he no, was okay no, I'm not. <laughs> uh commander clash when i think it was like our game where you were playing mono green tomer i was on a boros mill deck <laughs> and and I knew that I could not kill you because I was a mill deck. So I remember Tomer was like, you should kill the little fire weaver thing. Because yeah. Phil is playing a ton of artifacts. Yeah. But if Tomer's deck is loaded with Eldrazi's, yeah. and I literally don't deal damage, yeah. the closest chance I have is Phil using, even if it lowers my health, I wasn't going to beat Tomer anyways, right? No matter what happened, if I killed everyone else but, I would never be able to kill Tomer. So I wanted Phil to use the Fire Weaver to lower Tomer's health enough to where he, I could kill him with, like, just a hit with my commander. It's wishful thinking, but it was better than just, well, Mill? Oh, turns out you flipped an Eldrazi. I'm, <laughs> I'm back in it again, right? Well, so, the, the alternative is you just kill me, right, with damage. Right, because that's your that's other out. You don't just have mill as your as your only. No, win but condition. if the deck is mill and like it is, near, it's really struggling to deal. I had silver copper or whatever copper tablet. <laughs> like that's you that's how... Oz gear. You just have like an unblockable attack, and or sure. I just take out my defenders, and then you just but it's hit me and sacrifice you're, you're, a bunch of creatures. Your Eldrazi damage, defenders that are that are colorless. <laughs> that I that I can only I, cap uh... like one a turn. You could have just been like I don't know. <laughs> so, those the, again. One Eldrazi a turn is is I don't know if you know this, but that that's like kind of hard to deal with. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying you didn't have you didn't have one win condition to kill me. You had multiple ways nah. to but, kill but, me. And, but like it, with the information at my hands, right? Sure. I knew that I there was no way I was going to deal enough damage, so I yeah. needed Phil. I needed Phil to k- yeah. lower your health, that, and that is fair. playing to your outs, right? Like because like yeah. if if you're because again, the, if for those that don't know, Eldrazi shuffle everything in the graveyard with themselves back into your deck. So as a mill deck, which is my main game plan, that is that's very bad. <laughs> so yeah. But then on the other side, I knew I was at a higher life total than you. So you would die first to Reckless Fire Weaver. And also Phil was I gonna mean, kill both of us on his turn. Because he had the Nahiri's a... Lithomancy. So <laughs> well, what else are you gonna do? What else am I gonna do? Right? Like like I if I can't beat you with, with mill. <laughs> wipe the board? <laughs> no, 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 no. We, let, we just let our Wipe the board and then get the other two to kill me, I guess. <laughs> I've uh, run into a pretty simple example like this is a complicated example but yeah, outside of magic so me and my girlfriend play a lot of yahtzee and i think i had like two or three chances left to roll anything and the only way i could get there is if i roll a second yahtzee so i get 100 extra points so she was so far ahead that the only way i could win is use one of these three attempts to throw a yahtzee and i did nothing but the only way so i lost regardless but if i just try to throw like a small street or whatever i still need it that would have done nothing so the only way to play to my outs was to go for the yahtzee and have uh, five of the same kind if you don't know what a yahtzee is uh, uh, we all got convoluted examples yeah, here. <laughs> that, but, no but i thought like oh that's like playing to your outs in a super yeah. Simple I, I, way. Okay, let me let me attempt to magic don't gets super put it in a simple way, which may end up being don't complicated. Concede. Say you have a two card combo, okay? One part is on the battlefield, right? And the other part is in your deck somewhere. And let's say the board is super gummed up and it looks like if Phil untaps and overruns, we all die. Okay? So do you ra- and you have a wrath in hand, and if you wrath, your combo piece goes away. So the decision you need to make is do you wrath? And if you wrath, your combo piece goes away and you can never win again. Right or do you hope you fade Phil's overrun and then you can find your second combo piece and win the game, right? And that's the decision you need to make, and it's going to depend on variables, right? Like, uh-huh. did Phil tutor up the overrun? Right, it's definitely coming if he tutored it, right? But if you if you wrath, you cannot win. So if he did tutor it, then you need to hope that Tomer's holding a counter spell, even if he's not saying it, right? So you you have to kind of do these calculations to figure out what's going on uh but you know the the scared thing to do is just wrath wrath and then 
the board set is restate, and then I'll somehow kill them, even though you realistically can't because your combo is gone. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, it's kind of like working through that and not just doing what's what looks best at the time, which may be like Wrath or uh, I mean, like 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 Krim said, right? Like he can never beat Tomer in a straight up battle, so he needs someone to kill Tomer for him. So how can he get that done? And maybe he's just yoloing it and hope. You know, Phil does it, and he somehow lives, right? <laughs> so yeah, I, I have a higher percentage of that of winning through that than sweeping the board and helping Tom. All right, this is a very specific example that our viewers will not know of unless they actually watch this game and remember this game. <laughs> but I one 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 thing though is um, I know there's a lot of people in the community who say like. Um, if you don't like a game, just leave it. So this is basically the opposite of uh, like play to your outs. Is like if you're not enjoying what your outs are, then just concede the game and concede early. Like and concede once you don't enjoy it. Like somebody plays like yeah. like somebody is, has you in Winter Orb or something instead of like sticking it out and seeing can I get through. Like somebody's playing a stack deck and uh, instead of trying to see like oh maybe maybe we can get through the stacks. If we work together, what are our outs? What's the possibility of doing this? And then going through it and potentially winning, potentially losing. You're just like, if you're not enjoying it, just leave. I think that's fine. It's just, I personally don't do that. <laughs> I guess I have, is more because I have more a more competitive mindset. I always, I like seeing them as certain challenges. And sometimes like, I think that my favorite games are when I'm like, kind of like bummed out. And I think that there's no way I can possibly win. Like I'm playing my artifact deck and somebody farewelled me. And then and then I'm playing some more and I barely survive and somebody farewells me again and I have nothing. I'm I have like three lands going on. Then somehow pulling a victory out of that that gives me like the biggest rush of all time. Um, so I kind of live for that and I don't really concede unless unless we like all sit at the table and we're all like this game's gonna take like thirty more minutes. None of us have an answer. Um, if we have like literally no the the chances of winning is like less than one percent, then I'll be like, all right, we can all like concede together. It's but fine. that's a personal choice, though, right? Like yeah. that is, if you don't enjoy the game, you should yeah. walk away at yeah. sorcery speed. By the way, don't walk away like when stuff is on the stack. That's a <laughs> that's a bit of a jerk move. Yeah, and I think that's perfectly valid. Like if you want to sit and enjoy slogging through a humility, yeah. by all means, right? But play to win or not play to win play to have fun trumps play to win right if yeah. like, having fun is yeah. more important and for you not fun is like slogging through this then you can concede right and if everyone concedes you can go to the next game uh i concede in actual like play to win formats like on ladder if you are roping me every turn i just leave <laughs> i'm like <Yeah>. take, <laughs> take the points i'm not i'm like i don't have time for this right i'll just i'm, I'm gonna find someone that doesn't play like super slow like take but it you, right? you like, do the karn disco thing yeah, yeah it, like, so I think it's totally <laughs> valid to just leave a game of Commander if whatever, right? Like, you don't need to yeah. be playing sweaty all the time, right? Like, I could get out of this. It's a 1% chance, or maybe it's even, like, a 30% chance. But I do yeah. not want to play with humility on the board, right? It's my yeah. ETB creature deck or whatever, like, whatever. So I think it's I think it's a valid option, right? And I think it's a personal option. So if someone does it or someone doesn't do it, like, it's up to them. And mm-hmm. as long as you I mean, don't I, do I, it I, in I some do. weird jerkish way, like when, you know, on attacks to deny someone combat triggers or something like that, right? Yeah, don't do that, please. Yeah. <laughs> Play Your Outs also has a weird overlap with also just like, it blurs this line where you should maybe also not concede, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like instantly, right? Like, it, like, cause, like some people just concede immediately when something goes awry. Like, like, or like if I see a rest in peace and I'm a dredge deck. I could see some situation where people are like, oh, I can see. I can't. Yeah, some people. I've had people concede to me when I played. I have rest in peace in my Zedru deck, and I'll drop it down. Um, and somebody, I remember somebody snap conceded. It was like two years ago. Yeah, the seat. Like some people just snap conceded. That. I'm like, what's the point of that? That's like if yeah. you snap conceded when I played the Immortal Sun, right? Like, and, and you were playing Super Friends, right? Like, like no, I, but I yeah, I, but you did. I built, you, I you built played... a god deck that couldn't deal. I only had. Artif- I only had planeswalker ways of dealing with artifacts, so I was just like, screw it. After after that game, I put in a couple ways, like <laughs> like token ways of dealing with it. But like, I didn't I didn't concede. I stayed out because my out is somebody removing the right. mortal well, sun, right? Like, or are you dying, right? Like, so, right? Like, I can't play the game anymore, but I'm going to sit there on my phone until either you're gone or 
the 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 permanence gone, and then I can still play the game. And conceding right. means your your win percentage is zero, and staying in the game automatically increases it higher than zero, right? So. All right. Speaking of removing immortal suns, the best removal is player removal. Yes. Agreed. True. I think that's that is true, right? That'll always that's 100% be hundred percent true. true. Right? Like how how will that not be true? As like, as as a to source the plowshares cost one guys. Player removal costs a lot of time, <laughs> mana, resources, turns. I mean, source the plowshares could <laughs> potentially be the difference of keeping you alive. So I don't understand what you're getting here. I, I'm just saying, yeah. I, I, I agree that the best removal is player removal. It's more I I, I even source of flower shares right i'd rather just do player removal but there is an argument to be said that player removal is not easy it takes a lot of stuff of course. right and a source of flower shares is a one mana card that is removal i also don't like i also personally don't like taking out people early on in the game so like even if somebody's like ahead or something like i don't know phil plays a sol ring so he's ahead of us and then i try to take him out on turn five or something i don't know i don't i don't want to do that is it better than so. what we actually do to him which is like Destroy all his stuff and like severely yeah, cripple I him, him and then just leave him hanging around. What, what like, what is that really prefer? better though? <laughs> you prefer what, what, either being crippled or <laughs> or being well, taken out of the game. Hmm. I actually prefer being crippled and just hanging out, drawing some cards. At least I draw some cards. I, there you go. So in the so people said, um, not to go go off topic here, but this kind of contradicts this what you were just saying. Uh, when you have to the chance to kill somebody, kill them. We don't do it all the time. Like if you play hatred and you say, like, oh, I could kill you right now. There's always an argument to be said that like, oh, I cast hatred and pay a lot of life. So it's not too helpful for me to just randomly kill somebody. There is something to be said about, hey, if you can kill somebody, get them out of there. So they are not a threat anymore. Um, in this case... Is that yeah yeah I don't know. I think I, the goalposts change. I'm usually change. not killing people early mm-hmm. in the game. I like killing okay, everybody okay. at some but point. Phil, but Phil, okay, I think the goalposts change. Replace some random question mark fa- face with mine. You would kill me first <laughs> if you You're had sitting like, it, after me. Yes, <laughs> so like most and, and most pods. If there is a crim, I I will <laughs> I will like. Do you like you would kill them first, right? Because then you don't have to deal with the nonsense that could come with it, right? Like the control spells, the counter spells. Yeah, that's a good point. Right? Like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying here is, even if it is cooking my own goose, if there is a chance for me to kill the person, I don't care what you're doing. If you've done nothing, right? Okay, yeah. if you've literally done nothing and you've been on one land, okay, then then whatever. Okay, right? there is also merit not, yeah. merit to like keeping someone alive as well, right? Like we like the, when we say kill someone when you can, it yes, also but, means that that benefits your game plan, right? Like if, yeah, if if I'm just punching the person on like two lands who's done nothing all game, then I have done nothing but ex- use my resources, my attack power on them for no reason when I could be putting someone that's actually doing stuff, right? But I I do think that leaving somebody alive is it's it, you shouldn't feel bad for killing somebody early if you know their deck is detrimental to you. Yeah. Like like if if, but- if my if my thing just was like, I don't know, collector's oof collector oof is my commander and I'm playing nothing but death and taxes and stacks effects like on creatures, you would kill me, right? Cause, or uh-huh. or if my deck shut off your graveyard the whole time and you're a graveyard deck you would kill me first so i have you shouldn't a, feel bad for that i have sure. a relevant uh example that came very recently we were playing um pre-edh recently in a, a recent commander clash game and i remember krim you wanted me to kill you you were like you yes. were put back really low and i remember like it was like tom and phil you were just like popping off super hard oh yeah you had a card on the bow i was playing mono white and you had a card on the on the battlefield, a creature that taps, pay one life, and counter target white spell. So you were like, <laughs> "Kill me! I'm going to just make your life miserable." And you know what I did? I didn't kill you. And the reason True. why, even though even though you had a card that was on board, very detrimental to me. And the reason why I didn't kill you is because I found you, despite having that very scary against me, um, despite having that. You were not the scariest threat on the table for me. There were two other people, and I actually needed your resources to help me 
win the game. I thought they were I would also actually in white. Yeah, so I, I thought it would lower with. my my win percentage if I killed you because that's one less person to help me deal with Tom and deal with Phil. I'm not going to spoil the end of the game, but I feel like that was the correct thing to do. And after after the game, I think it was correct too. The creature was Stromgald Cabal and Richard Sweat. And he's like, hold on, what do you say? <laughs> he's like, I, I never sweat at Chris Counter Spells. Come on. Oh, no, it's no, no. It's not a removal spell removal. It's a clean <laughs> no, removal. No, 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 Richard. This isn't a one off counter spell. Which, by the way, I was trying to. I was doing a color shift deck. So that's yeah, why it was being cute. Yeah, yeah. And you weren't, you weren't like specifically hating me out. You just happened to have a hate piece that was very good <laughs> against me in particular. And I decided, like, yeah, you were problematic. You were the crim of the table because you're crim. But I, I, I kept you around because I don't think killing people is always beneficial. the correct option in terms of playing to your out. Sometimes you want to keep them alive because then yeah. you can use their resources for to favor your win percentage. Especially if you put should, resources Because I think most people will just take out mm. people if they can. And yeah. You know, take you should keep them alive because you feel bad, really, right? Like, if your deck pops yeah. off and kills someone, like, okay, your deck did its thing, right? But yeah. you should make the decision to kill them, right? So, like, if you think they help your game plan by staying around, maybe they give you resources to help fight yeah. people. Maybe they provide distraction, right? Sometimes they, they become you? arch enemy and they distract the whole table while you do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you should... Think you're about welcome, that Richard. before you just remove people. Like I like keeping Crim yeah. around. He he keeps the board yeah, clean. Yeah, he does. There right. was like, one if, game if I, I need a board that. wife, I need Crim, right? Uh, there or, was you know, one like... game that I let like just Phil <laughs> pop off. He was like playing the new Atraxa, and we had Elish Norn Ooh, locking yes. Phil down. And you know what I did? I just I took out the tra- I took oh, out the right. Elish Norn, and I let Phil pop off. And guess did what? I was I was a that? threat. He became the threat, and it worked very well in my favor. But, but you had to do it in some you... non-obvious way, though. <laughs> if it's too obvious, then people know what you're doing, right? Oh, no. I, I, I said, like, <laughs> there was like, constant heap-ups between Seth and Krim. It's just, like, stat, <laughs> stat-wise, we knew it. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to team up with Phil. Let's see what happens. And I got two cards out of it. He he drew me two cards of Florin on the third path as part of the Did deal, die? which was Re- nice. Remember the fact of fiction 5-0 split? I forgot where it was, but <laughs> the people were not happy with that. <laughs> right, but that that, that, that is like another instance of this where if it's too obvious, people yeah. are not happy about it. Right, so yeah. what? It what? See, but that's because in that because I was the person that gave Seth a five zero split. That was so obvious that it wasn't obvious though, <laughs> because because <laughs> it was like, why would you obvious ever do that? Me. What happened though? What happened though? Everybody went for Seth. Yeah. But we right? weren't happy so, about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't happy. <laughs> you weren't happy about it. But like, yeah, it was like, what's the game? Game where like, was it me where I use scheming symmetry or someone used scheming oh, symmetry? Right, I think and you I intentionally did. gave it so that it looks like right now you can win the game. I'm going to let you make you decide if you want to be the problem or not. I will let the person that is in charge tutor whatever they want, just so I can shift all the aggro to them. Because yeah, why not? Yeah. Well, sometimes it backfires. It's risky, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the one time it did backfire was when Richard and I play a game of chi- uh, removal chicken with yeah. Seth. Because I think I was always I was tired of Richard using me to remove everything, so I was like, "You use it, Richard." And then, yeah. and it turns out Richard didn't have it for real this time. <laughs> I don't <want> removal <laughs> trip. What are you talking then, about? Well, that was earlier on. It was and the Seth ended walker, up right? Yeah. yeah, Seth just ended up alting Lily. He's like, uh. That was the easiest alt ever. I was like, well, I thought we really had it. <laughs> Some, I think that's like the difference between play to your outs and play to win sometimes. Like, I think playing to your outs would, would mean trying to team up with, with people at the table, right? Because mm-hmm. if you can work together to eliminate an, an opponent, that means you're not the person who's being eliminated at first. But at the very least, you're not, you're not do- getting, getting killed for it. I, I do think that increases your EV. But at the same time, I don't like teaming up. I just don't like teaming up with people as a general rule. Because I feel like it's a four player free for all game and it kind of goes against the spirit of the thing. So I think that's like the difference between play to win. Play is not as bad as teaming up. Yes, but when when we see like the stats of like (laughs) that says people who team up every single game and they're they're (laughs) alternating who's in first and who's in second. Uh, that's that's. I don't think that's cool. I don't. I don't like that. Let's air out that that right okay. now. Okay. Okay. A. What do you and Phil play all the time? 
artifact decks, <laughs> combo decks, disgusting. It didn't matter what I was playing. Well, what was Seth? What do you like? Seth and I, I think that game, one of the games where Seth and I teamed up, I was on Bushido, right? <laughs> and then Seth was on Banding. No. <laughs> yeah, you got to understand. On energy. I was and, on energy on yeah, that one. And who won that game? Energy is pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's not very good. It's not so, very good in Commander. When you look at it by the numbers, yes, Seth and I did team up. But why did we team up? Because we were playing these trash. If you look at decks. the results, it was you in first and Seth in second, and just alternating for like eight games in a row. So <laughs> you, I don't so know. I, I don't. I don't buy the wait, full. I remember a stretch where both you and Phil, like, it was like we played against you two on Artifact Decks numerous times. Because I know Phil was like, I got to get this portal to Phyrexia to resolve it. I'm going to lose it a hundred times. Still and yet they, he's never done it a single time. So maybe maybe the threat assessment is not One exactly what, what? meeting no, the that stats. Is, that is because the threat assessment is if it was that, that scar, assess- If it was that strong, then he would actually win some games, right? But he no, does but wait, it. What, who, how did we, we stop it? You see, okay. it was, but Phil was deemed move. an Avengers <laughs> level threat. <laughs> Phil is an Wait, so level teaming threat. up yeah. is is if, hey, playing to I, win. I don't like I don't like teaming up. I don't think teaming up is bad if like example, I bring my, my Spectre deck and you bring mm-hmm. your I don't know, uh hat hat deck, right? And then Phil shows up with eminence, uh uh like I don't know, wizards or vampires or something like that. I think yeah. the two, it's okay for the underpowered decks to team up on the clearly overpowered deck, right? But yeah, but I don't think yeah, it's I mean, that clear cut all the time, and I don't like it when it's a team up like on turn two. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. If it's when if it happens too early in the game, then it's weird, right? Because you change yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, from yeah, sure, a multiplayer sure. game to yes. two headed giant. Sure. But if someone right. is like popping off arch enemy, then you're like, okay, we got yeah, we got to team up. But even yeah, then, I don't think that that's what was happening. Should probably dissolve the teams. Right, so you can yeah. to go back to four, four, four player game. Yeah, I agree with that. Unless there's yeah. an artifact deck, I always just kill the artifact deck no matter <laughs> okay. what. Okay, <laughs> like, right. I'm sorry. Spe- speaking of crim decks, make them have it. What is this referring to? This is referring to yes. if you are scared of like something, like maybe a counter spell or a removal spell that someone is, you know, is positioning. So they they, they hold double blue up, right? And you're scared of it. Should you just play into it and make them have it, or should you play around it? I I, I like make them have I it. like making them have it. Uh, but I but also it's see the problem with this is in a three like a multiplayer game making them have it is tough because it's whatever they deem threatening, right? Because like maybe whatever you think is your best spell may not be the biggest threat on their radar. Yeah. So they may just let it resolve. So then why not, right? You benefited by getting to play your best spell. It clearly doesn't matter to the control player, f- for better or for worse. And, and uh, the, like, the person they do counter, like, that means there's something going on there that they don't want. So that there is a lot here to, to take from that. And that the person they do counter, that means they smell – there's fear on them. You can smell fear on them because they're countering something from you, meaning something your deck is doing. They don't. They don't want. So that means you can easily get them. You can actually even bait the person countering your spells even easier if they deem you the threat. If that somehow makes sense. And while while one while the control player is focused on like be like hawked on one person, like let's just be honest here. I love Phil's decks, but because I love Phil's deck, I know what his power level is and what he can do. So I usually keep an eye out, knowing that Mana Drain is going to be at its best when I look at Phil. Right, that is hundred so, percent correct. Like, 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 like. Let's let's be fully honest here, right? Playing commander with each other, I mean, we know that. I know that, like, it's it's usually like like Phil at the top of the the Avengers level threat. <laughs> so that means the two players around Phil though can just squeak tons of things underneath that. So there is an advantage. So making them have it is good because then you know what the control player is afraid of, and you then know the people around the person they're afraid of can just go wild. So are we making them have it, Tomer? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I always, I always make them have it. I think the way control decks usually win is that they hoard a lot of their resources, like in their hands. They draw lots of cards. They have the mana up, and then they just don't have to use their answers. I think, I, I think it was Richard. I don't know who who told me it was like the best source of plowshares is, the, or the best counter spell is the one you never have to cast. Like that's that's like the the motto of like control 
is like you don't want to be using it but you want to always have that threat in your hand and just the the threat of having something in your hand it wields so much political power you could be like like a spells on the stack and what's like the most common thing the blue player says when a, when a spell on the stack is like is this going at me is this going to be a problem? <laughs> Are we friends? Blah, blah, blah. And if you could just coerce the entire table into this fear, fear mindset, right? Of like, I, I'll, I'll counter your thing if you're not friendly to me, if you attack me, if you do all these things. But that's how they win. Because if everybody's like, oh, yeah, I, I won't attack you. I won't, I won't deal with your thing. Just please don't, please don't, Mr. Mr. Control Player, please don't, don't counter my spell. Don't, don't remove my thing. Then they, you just be like, here's the game, sir. Here's the game, Mr. Blue Player. Just enjoy. I, enjoy. I have it. This doesn't apply in it's yours. though. Because I, I'm sure Krim can recall. It, it goes with the best removal is player removal. So if yeah. Krim represents a counter spell, right, and we think he has a counter spell, then we're like, well... We got to get the counter spell out. So how yeah, do we do well, that? That's, we got to make, you him, gotta make him to tap it. out. So you just start know. beating him mercilessly, <laughs> hoping that he's going to tap out to play a creature <laughs> or a removal though. or something, right? But if he doesn't actually Except have the counter the spell, he just like dies, yeah. and then he's like, "I didn't have anything, guys." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so but if Seth right, was at the that? table, you you would know. Seth, Seth is always like, "Oh, you're, well, friends, right? Please don't counter my thing. I won't. I won't attack you for five turns because he doesn't intend to ever attack, right? Like so. So he's like, "I won't attack you ever." And I, Please just let me draw cards, Mister Blue Player. Please. And it was like, yeah, okay. Sometimes representing spells makes you into like player removal so yeah I don't know ideally about... you answer you answer the control player by like you better freaking use it then <laughs> yeah that's how i play so, so that one that one's interesting one but i, I agree Think that most people it. play too scared that they're like oh he has counter spell i'll just pass. Think about it right yeah. just pass yeah, my if they use their counter spell guess what they don't have their counter spell anymore <laughs> but well, if they well, actually what? have the counter spell but what if they do, don't do, do you, have it? Like, do you make them have it what on an important threat? Die? Like, let's say you know they're going to counter it. Would you actually play your good spell into it just to get the counter out of their hand? You have the sequence. Or, or should properly. you or should you sandbag it with something like they won't counter? I think I've been bamboozled by like Richard and Seth a lot, actually, in terms of like. I'll be playing blue spells and I'll counter something that I think is like the number one threat. And they'll be like, yeah. actually, no, I just wanted to get this wheel out or whatever. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah. There was also a good point there of if they don't have it and you play around it, they kind of had it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, maybe if you sometimes you have a hunch of like, oh, they have a counter. And if they counter this, I can't win. Maybe don't make them have it. But if it's just, hey, I don't know if they have a mana mana drain or something oh, mana drain mana tithe or something something unlikely don't feel bad if you didn't I, you always say haha play around mana tithe but <laughs> sometimes they don't have it and if they don't have it but you still play like they have it they got an advantage out of your fear so yeah sometimes you just gotta bite the bullet they might or have a if, counter it's still just a one for one or if you, if you have two cards you can cast and one of them is you you need it to resolve then and oh, yeah. you think they have have an answer? Then you can cast the other thing instead and hold that off for a turn and see uh, reevaluate the next turn. But usually, I just right. jam it. Here, here's a good one, which I think this is an interesting one. Waiting to see if opponents remove slash counter the problem before you should do it should be taught to every commander player. So this, if Richard, you play you Bodo, it's very explicit. Okay, <laughs> so I see this a lot in Paper Magic where someone plays a threat. And the person last in turn order counters it immediately, uh, which is 100% wrong because it's not even their turn, right? But now, obviously, no one else is going to counter it because they know that person is going to counter it, right? But the way you do it correctly is you go through the turn order and everyone has a response. And if no one has a response, then the spell resolves, which means if you are the last person in that turn order from the person who cast the spell, you are the last person that can counter it, okay? So... If you really want to counter it, there's two people that go before you. You should see if they counter it first, right? And then yeah. when you're the last person, you can decide to counter or not. And you should stick to this turn order. And if you play CDH, it's like very obvious. If you play on Moto, it's very obvious. But at casual tables, people just see a spell in the stack and they jam their cards in, uh, which is actually yeah, not they're, correct. They're eager. Yeah. They're excited. Right? So <laughs> you can wait turn order and you're not like doing anything weird, right? Uh, so... Mm. There is a turn order, and that's that's the response order, and you should follow it. 
to to cash your thing. So you never know, right? Even if you didn't intend to let someone else do it, they may do it for you first, right? And if you're last, then you have the advantage. But just, what happens if correct? all if everybody just throws in their spells at the same time? Do you just it, say it, hey. it resolve it resolves in turn order, right? So then yeah. So do you I, don't, I don't even know what happens because you can't counter a spell that's counter. not there. <laughs> Right, yeah. so like you're, you, you would actually rewind it, and then the person that goes last like has to take back their counter spell or something, right? Because take yeah, back. It's, it's, still, it's still on the stack. It's still on the stack. It's fine. It's still on the stack. It's fine. Yeah. So you just you do just nothing. You just waste content. the counter spell. If everybody's yeah. like, ah, I just be like, wait, everybody, relax. Yeah. <laughs> Turn order. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do yeah. this properly. That's how I would do it. But uh, I totally okay, this one's not gameplay related. Buy singles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's boring, but yeah, it's not, true. Sh- sh- should I yes. pack boxes, collector boosters? No, no. I mean it's maybe fun, for maybe for the one ring good. or whatever. But like, but no, like, oh my god, <laughs> <That's even worse. laughs> just buy a lot of ticket if you're really bad. Just, that's no, 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 it's not a, it's not that bad if you just open it on the first pack. You buy. Oh, oh good point. Yeah, yeah. Buy, you say open that. <laughs> buy packs Simply if you derive open. enjoyment from packs where you like, yeah, if you're like drafting. The only time I buy boxes is like I'll, I'll buy a box and I'll draft with friends and then I really yeah. enjoy that. But I don't really get that much pleasure from just like opening up a box, but like my boyfriend does. So mm-hmm. he'll he'll do that every once in a while. But like, it, I don't feel you. You buy packs, right? I love collected packs. Oh. I never buy yeah. whole boxes or something, but every set I treat myself to one to three depending on how expensive they are i just love it yeah. i never expect something good i opened a foil force of negation which was a little bit more expensive than the packs i got them uh, it out of but usually it's i never make plus with this i just like cracking packs sniffing the cards Ooh, and you get random cards in your a factory smell in your mm. bag that might be cool with the next commander deck but if you don't do that if you need specific cards or if you want to make a profit because my god this is not a good way for profits yeah it's i think the exception to that is pre-con decks um so if you need cards from pre-con decks it's often correct to just buy the pre-con oh, yeah. rather than buy the singles but definitely over the random packs you could hit the lottery or you could hit nothing and usually, uh, if you're just looking for like playable versions, like it's they're usually pretty cheap, right? Because usually the the prices are sucked up by the the special editions and whatever Chase Mythic is in the set. Uh, so totally. generally, just picking up singles is better. But you know, if you if you like cracking packs, like you gotta you gotta pay for that, right? <laughs> you pay for that privilege, right? So that that that's what the premium you pay when you when you buy boxes. Are you are you big on cracking packs, Richard? I hate cracking packs, actually. I actually oh, hate the literal God. act of opening packs. It's, like, so tedious. Do you, do you I, struggle with it? Wow. I've, yeah. I've known people who are like, and I then can't all open the this. mounds of garbage <laughs> afterwards. I'm like, oh, jeez, yeah. right? But and then the smell. In the 2023, smell. like, 99% of what you crack is worthless. So then I actually end up with a pile of garbage <laughs> and, like, four cards. And I'm like, this seems like a... A waste of time. Oh, the worst is like I can't. I I feel like it's a punishment to organize the cards afterwards. Yeah. Like you open up a booster yeah. box and you're like, all right, now I have to <laughs> alphabetize it and put it into colors and stuff. Like there's actual like piles of cards that I uh, from Baldur's Gate. That's how long ago? Over a year now uh, <laughs> of cards just stacking up out of out of view. Thank God uh, of cards that I refuse to organize because it's like a punishment. <laughs> I have a oh, look, bad Chris, example. Are you big of- on it? Oh, oh I, I just don't. I just don't. Yeah, I pretty much would echo Richard's uh, opinion on this. I don't. I'll open them like for funsies, but anything I I, I just buy what I want right away because I don't want to. If I'm trying to like open a Ragavan, I'm just gonna buy Ragavan, right? Like, ooh, I know, and it seems like oh, you're gonna eat eighty dollars. Yes, I will eat yeah. eighty dollars now rather than spend. Five hundred dollars and maybe not even <laughs> open it. Could have a scouting town old border foil in this pack as well. Uh-huh. Then have then both this I and just, maybe it's a Ragavan as well. You could have. <laughs> it's like the I Simpsons just, I, meme. The, <laughs> <laughs> I could just buy whatever I want, or like, is it like whatever I need? Because then I I actually save more money in the long run. And space. oh, for sure, yeah. It's uh, so be- what Richard said. The cards are usually so the easiest rule is. Everything you open is worthless, even if you don't think about it. Even if the card is played. Like, I 
got Zendika boosters and there was nothing in there but then the last card was a foil on the inversion and I thought well, well that was worth it ah. and it's like 10 cents or something yeah. in Germany <laughs> I'm like man is, at yeah. least I can play it but most it's cards great if you are buy worthless singles. even if even if you buy, even if you get lucky with your packs and you get something that's like worth like $80 it doesn't mean that you have $80 in your hand it means you have to like Still find a seller you put it on a like card market or a TCG player and you're not getting $80 for it you're getting like 60 or whatever and then you have to send it and you have to buy the the letter and you have to do all the whole the whole shaboodle it's like it's not it's Sh- not that great shaboodle all right don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> is this, this like diehard? Like... <laughs> it sounds so bad to say anything. Okay, Bruce that would Willis. Be like, 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 what, oh yeah, no, I so agree. What, what does this refer? This refers to like someone like threatening you or something. Yeah, give and context. Then, yeah. Give context. Trying to, I don't know what it would be like. You need to do this, or I'll remove your thing. I well, guess, more right? or common you need is to like, do this, or I'll counter your spell, kill, like, or or I'll kill you, right? Like, yeah. I I never negotiate with terrorists. I the, the thing I hate the most is if somebody's like keeping me at one, and they have on like they can kill me at any time, and I know there's absolutely no way like I will ever live. Like if I try to cast something, I'll just die at instant speed. I will I will never negotiate. I will be like just kill me. <laughs> would you? I would I would take just. No, if yeah, I have no, if, if my win percentage points. does not go up by saying yes, then I will not. I will well, not. If you die, uh, so if you die, your win percentage is zero. So yeah. if by, by living, it's above zero. No, no. Well, like, let's, say, let's say let's say somebody says I'll, I'll attack you and kill you unless you do my bidding. I'll say yes. But if somebody has like I have blood artists on the battlefield and I have a sack outlet at instant speed, and you're at one. Anything you can do to answer this blood artist will will kill you. Well, they're like, all right, just kill me then. I don't care. Do it. I, don't know, I, mean, I, I just don't negotiate on principle like that. Oh. Uh, but if you actually play to your outs, I think you you accept that in that terms because what could happen is someone else can draw more hate from that player. And then when their board gets inevitably wrapped, they may point all the blood artist triggers at that other player and keep you at one because like someone else like earned that spite if you're trying to play to your outs. But I just simply don't engage in it. I'm like, if you want to kill me, you can kill me. If you want to, if you want to leave nice. me here, you can leave me here. Right? That that's your choice. I I I am not in a position of power. You decide that. Right? I'm not going to give you further power by by accepting your demands. Right? So I. So you're John McClane. <laughs> Talking like Richard do you, is John McClane. I, I yeah. don't. I don't yeah. like politics. I, I don't like like yeah, these yeah. Like, actual straight up question answers. Like I know people say, like, "Oh, Richard, you always play politics and stuff like that." But I consider like that not really politics. I play with other players in mind, but I don't like straight up like, "Will you do this?" Or you know, "What are you going to do?" I'll do this, right? Or if I do this, will you do that? I don't like. I usually those say I'll think about questions. it. Like I'll, I'll I'll decide once I once I get there. That's <laughs> yeah. your your typical well, answer. Well, what did I used to say? Like I, I, I don't do have, enough have information, enough information to make a decision right <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. right? Like you you figure it out, right? Like, I'm not playing the game for you. You decide if you think I will answer it or not. Yeah. Uh, so I I prefer we just play to the board rather than yeah. go on these like weird excursions where we, we try to like make teams or you know whatever like make you know make temporary treaties or whatever right so yeah i think that's one of my favorite things just using that because i clearly have i, I don't want to sound too threatening i i don't have enough information to make that decision i, I always I take that information as in tomer you're going to be attacked tomer i'm going to try to kill you, <laughs> you can i'm like all right you want <laughs> Right. The, this the, means war. <laughs> You've dropped you, you down the gloves. Read, read the card. I don't yeah. have enough information. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anytime I'm like to Krim or, or Richard, and I'm like, I'll remove the spell as long as like you don't swing me for lethal next turn. And then the response is, I'll think about like I'll, I'll I need more information. It's like, nope, that's not happening. And then, <laughs> uh, okay, we are after at war. De- after defeat, never look at what you've drawn. Do Do you guys like to leaf through? Your top no. decks <laughs> after after a game to see what what may have been what could have been sometimes no. I don't it's yeah. interesting. You, you don't use that draw <laughs> neck draw card button on Moto to why see do you what's, want the knife top. to be twisted I don't understand 
<laughs> I I think for for too long in like sixty card formats, you know, I, I used to do that all the time, right? Like, oh well, let's see. I oh I would have gone there in three turns. No, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> like I I don't know that, right? Like I. I, I don't know that it's random. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change. You died then. You didn't have it in hand. You know, GG's next. Hmm. Simple as that. It's because then it's like, like what what does it do? That is the the purest form of copium, right? <laughs> that, that <laughs> does it are... ever make you happier to look at the next yeah. cards that you would have drawn? Does it? Is there ever a situation where you're like, I'm happy that this made me happy? It's either neutral because you know you wouldn't have won anyway. Or angry because you're about to win. It's never happy. Dep- if it's a funny story, like imagine, it, not that it makes you happy, but if you can show the table, oh, look, I would have drawn my infinite combo piece. That kind Nobody of is better for that. the story of the game if you say, oh, I would. Although I'm kind of falling yeah. to this. Is, is that, that so cool? If someone's like, oh, yeah. I would have won next turn. You're like, okay. That's like okay, classic, so, like, so like. I, I don't want to spoil it, but the end of Zombie Week. Uh, I mean, you still drew the card, but if it would have been on top, it would have been f- a funny story to tell. That, but I did draw it. I didn't. It wasn't you did draw it in the post-mortem game. One more card. I, I like it. I don't. I'm not salty, but I, I usually don't get salty. So I'm, I'm not looking at. Ooh, could I have won this? Just look what's under there. It's also it's kind of like drawing cards, even though it's out of game. Still, still fun. <laughs> Yeah, you play really the game after everyone's gone. You finish your turn. Just <laughs> 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 some mana. Go in. There's nothing wrong with it. I just, I just don't do it because I know I will get salt. That, that's more, uh, more my real take is I'll get salty if I, if I look at it. Like I'm not gonna make me happy. But yeah, what, aren't you supposed to not get you? salty? You're like, oh, yeah, if like, I just had one more turn, I could have got there. Oh, I was like, oh, worked. I could have won. Right? Is that, I could have won if I had that is? Plus, No, it's like, oh, I could have won if I was first in the turn order instead of fourth or like, you know. Yeah. It's like, ugh. Ugh. I have one that's interesting, though. Is Commander pay to win? I want to hear your thoughts on it. Because every single time I say the B word, you, you, you beeline B? towards my life total. What, what's the oh, budget? Uh, I, I do not think that, like, how much you spend on the deck equates to how much you win. I think that on any – what was that? It was like Vegas, you, right? It was you, Richard, me, and Seth, plus one. You played the – not the Sidisi. What's the morph uh, oh, commander? Yeah, Kadena. the morph precon. Kadena. Richard beat us with a precon. Seth yeah. was on his uh, blue-white blink deck with uh, Brago. Oh my god! Yeah, Disgusting. and That's Richard brutal. just casually just like rolled us because, again, like, <laughs> it's like legitimately that I, I, it shows that money and Tomer also in a, a walking example of it doesn't matter how much you spend because you can definitely win with a budget. So, just because a deck is a million dollars does not mean you will win every time. But the I, best cards, uh, like Great Hench and Meatook Massacre, they are expensive for a reason because they really, really help your win percentage. Like they are mm-hmm. so, but so good. Like, I'm thinking about getting a Meatook Massacre, even though it's disgustingly expensive, just because it's just so good. My God. Oh, but you can. So I would say out. it's. Yeah, and you could also obviously you can proxy everything, whatever. That's, I mean, yeah, if, sure. You can't I mean, answer the, the question proxies. if you. <laughs> right? sure, yeah. like, can you win without? So I would say it is. Massacre? It is. Yes, I yeah. mean it's not. It, Does your you deck never get say pay to win in, in a probably. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. So... Because pay to win doesn't mean you can't win if you don't pay usually, but your chances are obviously going up if you play the insanely expensive cards like Mana Crypt. That's a good one. It's a bit expensive, but it's. Maybe the best card in Commander. Ristic Studies. They're all pretty expensive because they greatly increase your chances to win the game. Unless you say the arc enemy problem, sure. Always play a precon to stay low key, but I would say to an extent, magic is inherently pay, pay to win, doesn't really. It's pay to it, play. It, and at some point it, it's pay to win but it's not the only factor right it's it's yeah. right. it's one of the factors right so obviously if you have plans. unlimited money you can play the most powerful staples uh like dockside mana crypt etc if you don't have the staples you need to play very strong cards that are narrow right so like dockside is good because it goes in literally every deck which is why it's expensive right but there are cards maybe not dockside right but there are cards that are very powerful that only go in specific decks 
Uh, and then you have to play those decks, right? And then Tomer's budget commanders are like very good examples of that, where you have like some engine commander, and then all their support cards are like just random commons or something, which you wouldn't slot in a normal deck, but with this commander, it's insane value. Uh, so, so like budget matters, but it's not the only factor, and you can build really good decks without budget. And the reason we always kill Tomer when he uses a B word is he always overcompensates and says, oh, it's a budget deck. Let me make it super strong to prove <laughs> yeah. you can make budget decks are strong, <laughs> right? And then he, he is correct. We see they're very strong and we kill them first, right? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how strong your deck is. You can't win 3v1. Uh, but you know, they're, they're very strong decks, right? And they're too strong for us. So we're like, well, just kill them, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah, so, but you don't have the flexibility, right? Like if you... Yeah. Have like Dockside, Mana Crypt, or whatever. You can build, you know, you can like swap out cards or something. But usually the very strong budget decks, like there, it's like a Tolerant deck or something, right? Or, uh, you know, there, there's like a very specific Zato. engine that's happening. Yeah. Like you can't just randomly swap around cards in the yeah. same way. Um, but yeah. You have, to, is, you have to have like a, you have to have a commander that takes cards that are not desirable, not super staply. And yep. makes them broken. Like Zada, for example, takes like an Expedite, which is a one mana red uh, target creature gains haste until end of turn and you draw a card. And if you have like five five creatures on the battlefield with Zada, you just draw six cards and all your creatures have haste now. Like that's that's busted, but that's like a five cent card or something like that. I think you can't do CDH. Like you can't do at an actual CDH table have a high chance of winning because you just absolutely you don't have access to like fast mana and like Rhystic study and and of uh, you know the uh, dock side and stuff like that. Um, depending on the budget, obviously. But like I think if you had a budget deck of like twenty five dollars, thirty dollars, you could go at tables with people who have like one thousand deck dollar decks, two thousand dollar decks. If it's like high power casual. You could still win pretty easily. Pretty easily, but you could still win. Like if they don't underestimate be, you, winning the second time might be yeah. way harder. It would be than easier if you had a higher budget. Like Zada, for example, is like twenty five. Like I have a twenty five dollars Zada. It will clean up tables. But would it be better if I had Dockside and Deflecting Swat? Absolutely. <laughs> if I had my mana, if I had a mana crypt. Uh, Instead of winning like on turn five or something, if somebody doesn't stop me, I'll just win turn three if somebody doesn't stop me. And it's harder to stop me on turn three. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I would also take a better pilot than a more expensive deck like any day. Uh, yeah. Like I if mean, you're playing, winning with Kadena, pre con deck. Well, yeah, well, playing a deck that's appropriate for the pod is also very important. It may be very powerful, yeah. but if everyone thinks you're arch enemy, like you're dead already before, <laughs> yeah, yeah. before the game has started right so like yeah it makes more sense to bring a lower power deck to that table so that everyone doesn't just gang up on you and try to kill yeah. you instantly i don't play zada because there's not i don't have tables where it's appropriate it's just it's too high power and it's salt air and it's not fun for people so i don't play All right it. To, to close out the podcast never feel bad for winning do we agree on this yeah I, no, why, why should you? Why should you? I don't agree with this. Build, build to win versus feeling bad because you've won are two different things. So, like, if if my goal is to build my deck and beat you by turn three, that is wrong at a casual table, right? Like, like unless like for some like if the the whole table is to just if you all agree upon it, sure, that's fine. But on average, I would say it is not correct to build your deck to win on turn three or four have win conditions if you win the game that's fine like i it's not bad they're like oh by the way turn 11 uh it's like the turn amount that we've discussed i'm gonna try to win now that's not bad you shouldn't feel bad for that i think that's totally fair because the game's got to end at some point so why should you feel bad in a game like even like a casual game I think of casual games like board games as well. There's always a winner in Monopoly after this nine-hour slog fest. There's always a winner no matter what you do in whatever board game, casual game you're playing. There should be a winner. Everybody's a loser in Monopoly. You played Monopoly. That's true. There is no winner. Everybody loses in Monopoly. Okay, that's the it's only game where everybody's a loser. But, <laughs> like, but like on average, I would say that you shouldn't feel bad. Like Board game, casual, competitive, whatever it is, there should be a winner. And you shouldn't feel bad for that. Building I think it depends on how story. this game plays out. So, like, if, it, if if you win the game, 
and the game was like fairly even. Like I don't know why yeah. someone would feel bad for that. But if you like demonic station Thoracle like three Kithkin decks. Should probably feel bad about well, it. Sure, yeah. right? So yeah. I it kind of depends CDH on deck. what's what's going on here. Um, yeah, building to know. win is is not good in a like is, it would I would say it would be like you said demonic consultation. Okay, what, what, what if I someone was mana screwed the whole game and you just punched them from turn one until they died? Should you feel good about that? Should you feel bad Only about that? Only if they had Curse of Opulence on them, and then I still feel very good about it. I got a gold out of it. I mean, yo, you, you should have you should have uh, not had one land. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm only I'm only punching you when you're down. If I get something out of it, all right. And if I get something out of it, I might feel a little bit bad, but I'm gonna get something out of it. I mean, if you think about it, like if I'm stuck on lands, every tr- I just treat it as I paid eight life to keep give myself an extra turn. Right, every turn that if I have no lands and y'all hit me, it's okay. I paid eight life to get another turn in this game. <laughs> I think I've I've had many times where well, not many times I've had I've had times over my decade plus of playing commander where I felt bad for winning, and half of the time it's because it's a power level mismanagement where I thought everybody was bringing like higher power decks and i brought my changeling deck and it kind of like popped off on turn five and i made like a bajillion mana and i drew a billion cards and i took like 15 minutes to to like just joy ride my way to victory i felt <laughs> bad about that that sucks and then there was another one where i built like a lane Zoth deck with child of alara and i thought it was really cool in my head and it was like it was still the same power level as everybody like i lost like four games in a row and then the fifth game where i actually popped off I was wiping the board of all non-land permanents multiple times per turn. So if anybody played a non-land permanent, I would just instant speed wipe wipe the board again and again and again until I won with Maze's End. I felt bad about that one. I took that apart. I took that deck apart. So it's like I think it's it's in the it's in the it's what deck you pick. Like you want to match power level, and then sometimes decks are just people don't like playing against them and then then i feel bad if i if i brought that out and i won and i didn't like i you try you try to match the table but like sometimes you screw up so sometimes yeah and sometimes you get lucky i i usually i had a lot of games where i felt bad about it and it's usually power level but not just power level of the deck but sometimes you just have a nut draw and people don't Mm -hmm. know the deck and know that it's not as good usually and then you win on turn four or five and say like, well, I, "Oops, I guess was I won." Was it Lonus Phil? Was it Lonus? Let's be if you're honest. Yeah, it happened with Lonus before, and it <laughs> happened with Manius Kalga because I copied an opponent's Locust God, which goes infinite <laughs> with Manius Kalga, and I said then, "Good." I'm going to well, say I'm not I have surprised. A on sacrifice of outlet ones. for mana, and now I have infinite mana, infinite card draw. Here's my deck. I guess I win. So these are you can't control it. I guess that some wins you like some. Right. Sometimes you feel bad about it. Don't pop stomp people with crazy power level decks. That you obviously doesn't feel good, and you should probably not feel good about winning. Don't feel bad about winning if you execute your game plan as you play, planned it. Like my decks yeah. usually win with an infinite. Don't feel bad about going infinite. That's probably I'm not gonna attack. <laughs> what am if I you feel do? bad about Duma. your deck doing this thing, then change your deck. Yes. Like, that's what I do with Child of Alara. I felt bad for, for Child of Alara doing its thing, so I just took it apart. That's it. But if you if you always feel bad about it, then it's like, what are you doing? Are you, are you really feeling yeah. bad about it? If you just keep on jamming <laughs> the same thing, it's like, oh. <laughs> I don't right. know why my Brea deck keeps looping artifacts. I don't understand. <laughs> this is the first so time bad. it's ever happened, you guys. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so that... That concludes our podcast on uh, Sage Magic, the Gathering Advice. If there's some advice that you've heard or you uh, actively tell other players, uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm actually curious uh, what what advice people give. What, one thing we should also have added is like, what, what do you actually tell people? Or do you actually tell people like bolt the bird? Like, where where, where does this advice come from? Uh, maybe we'll do that advice for new players or something. But mm. uh, yeah, if you have any other pockets of wisdom piece of wisdom that uh you haven't heard uh, let us know in the comments and then we'll see you all here back next week see you